Let's get dusty. It's time for Remote and Epic Baja. Here we go on the 2023 Monster Energy Trail Emissions presented by Can-Am, brought to you by BF Goodrich Tires. <laughs> Welcome to the majestic Baja Desert, a place where nature's artistry unfolds in every direction. As you traverse this arid expanse, you'll discover a world of breathtaking terrain and sights that will leave you in awe. Baja's formidable exploration and mining have led to routes and trails that have in many cases been long forgotten, but not to a small group of off-road enthusiasts. For Larry Ragland, Roger Mears, Renee Brueger, and myself, we have done a ton of poking around and exploring in Baja. Here the rugged mountains stand as silent sentinels, their peaks kissed by the golden sun. As you gaze upon these ancient giants, you're transported to a world where time itself seems to slow down. However, some of these trails have had only my tires on them out of this group we'll be able to surprise even the wily veterans with some new routes. For those of us with more years under our belt, it's a great honor to share some remote magic with the next generation of Baja stars. We've, we've been talking about doing it in UTVs for a bit, and then uh, we're finally just kind of able to make it make sense this year. And we're really excited to take part in trail missions and uh, obviously the rich history uh, that these guys have down here and uh, kind of maybe start a tradition uh, on the four-wheel side here. It's a neat concept, really, you know, that Cameron came up with going to all the missions. I think that, you know, we get, we get wrapped up in racing Baja. You know, how do we attack the roads? How do we get the most out of it? And to come here on a little bit of relaxed a note and, and uh, you know, check out and learn a lot about the history. For this Trail of Missions adventure, we welcome some youthful future heroes that have been dominating our sport. Baja 1000 and score overall champion Phil Blurton from Northern California. He is the leader of our group when it comes to winning big races in his Can-Am and he will help break the trail on this trip. I just got to Gonzaga Bay, my first time ever being here. It's awesome, we got a great group of people here. A lot of people I've never met before until a couple minutes ago. But uh, excited, you know, I come to Baja a bunch, but I never get to come to Baja just to go enjoy it and have fun and actually look around. So it's exciting. My dad's here with me, uh, brought his car so he can actually get some seat time. I heard he built you a pretty sweet car. Oh, here. yeah, it's right over here. It's beautiful. I can't wait to go out and uh, see how it goes. So every time we ride together, though, I spend about 15 minutes and then I can't see his desk. So I'll see if I can keep uh, my, my goal is to see if I can keep up with his desk. Sarah Price, who's on a hot streak of winning, including the recent Nora Mexican 1000, and who will next year represent BF Goodrich at the Dakar Rally. I think it's the ultimate. To have trail missions via UTV trip is the icing on the cake. It doesn't get better than that. You're kind of mixing dirt bikes and trucks into one, you know, like a UTV can go anywhere. Builder and race winner Mitchell Alsop also joins us from Bakersfield, California. His pro stock winning terror reign has locked up multiple championships but this week, he's on his first exploring, not racing, Baja Adventure. He's the youngster of the bunch at 32. It's an honor to have the Ampudia family name represented on this year's trip. Rodrigo is the oldest of three brothers and fresh off a win at the Baja 250. His family has won the overall championship at the Baja 1000, and they own and operate the legendary Papas of Beer locations in Baja. The Ampudias have also created the Baja Beach Fest Summer Party in Rosarito. Polishing it up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta look good. Can't be fast if you don't look good. Yeah, baby, what do you know? We're here in the middle of Baja. I brought all my buddies. We brought our Can-Ams, and we had to come see the beautiful Cardones, the Boojums, the Akatias, the Elephant Trees. We wanted to share the Never Never with everybody. We're taking a group of know-it-alls, guys like Hall of Famers like Larry Raglan, 
and Roger Mears and a bunch of new people that have won a ton of races like Rodrigo and Sarah Price and Phil Blurton and Mitchell Alsup and their friends. And we're going to explore Baja. We're going to take you along the Mission Trail. What is it? Well, the Spaniards started coming to Baja in the late 1600s and started building churches or missions. They wanted to share culture, religion. They brought horses and cows. They did a lot of different things. But one thing they did for sure is they built a trail called the El Camino Real or the Royal Road. And that's kind of loosely what we're going to be doing. Not only are we taking dirt drivers, but we have a NASCAR guy who's won a race called Casey Mears. We're taking him outside of his comfort zone. Well, he's raced at Baja and he is Roger Mears' son. And we're going to throw him right smack dab in the middle of it. Where we're at right now is Fred's Tractor Trail. We're going to climb up this hill, have a little bit of fun, kick the show off. But while we get back in the cars, we want to send you to some action that we did earlier today on a trail called, what's it called? Satan's Anus. Satan's Anus. They're afraid to say it, but I'm going to say it. Let's check it out, you guys. Our goal is laughing and heckling while being safe and also respectful to Baja. With this crew, anything is possible, and with Can-Ams, virtually any trail is possible. The Baja Desert may seem barren, but look closer and you'll find life resiliently thriving. But make no mistake, Baja can be a tough environment and some trail names speak for themselves. The first one is new for everyone. It's an old mining trail in a remote coastal mountains that has a formidable rock section that keeps most vehicles out of here as it's better suited for mountain goats. We call it Trail of Missions and we wanted to start it off with a banger location so we will both trail haul and crawl to the Santa Maria Mission Ruins. In the heart of the Baja Desert, beauty lies in not just the grandeur of its landscapes, but in the quiet moments, the subtle details, and the connection to the natural world. As you explore this wondrous place, remember that the true beauty of the Baja Desert is not just what you see, but what you feel. A profound connection to the raw, untamed spirit of Baja. Oh, coming to Santa Maria Mission Ruins, uh, I didn't really have anything to expect, I guess, you know. I just kind of just came in with an open mind and figured Cameron's the Baja legend and would show me all the ways around here, and here we are. Phil Blurton from Auburn, California. It's a different mindset for sure coming down here and getting to just go explore and not really having to worry about, you know, winning a race or where my chase crew's at all the time. We've got Larry and my dad and Roger down here. And it's like, my dad's coming down and chasing all these races, but it's rare that he gets the opportunity to hop in a car, which uh, for me now, it's funny because he was always the one worried about me. Now it's kind of turning. I'm checking in to see where he's at the whole time. Oh man, this is the trip of a lifetime. I come down with my son and do this again. And you know, I, he, he races a lot and I get to chase him around the desert, but to go out and uh, let him see if he can keep up with me, it'll be quite the challenge. <laughs> I'm super fortunate. I think my dad's pretty much been on like almost every test session, every single race. Racing has like really brought my family together always. You know, it kept me out of trouble in school because I raced every weekend. I raced dirt bikes. Every Wednesday we went to the track. Like that's just what I've done the whole time is hung out with my dad and raced. So um, I've got my son in carts now trying to push that direction because it seems like for some reason if you put a kid in something that has an engine and tires, it keeps them out of trouble and keeps them with you. I own No Limit RD, um, so we build a bunch of bolt-on accessories for side-by-sides, uh, roll cages, suspension, and we do a handful of complete race car builds a year. It's nice because I get to go out, race them, free run in them, play with them, test them, and then everything that we learn from racing, we apply into the parts that we build. Racing with Phil is, uh, is, is difficult at times. Um, the last few years, we've been split up into different classes. I watch what he does. I watch his program, and he's just, he's on point. I look up to him in many ways um, as an individual, as a racer. In 30 years from now, we will be talking about Phil Burton and what he's accomplished in, in, in this industry. It's absolutely amazing to be down here with him and continuing to learn from him because he is, uh, he's one of the best. It's cool being on the radio, you know, we got what, 14 cars with us, everybody chatting back and forth and a little bit of King of the Hammer style rock crawling and then all of a sudden you just drop down in the middle of the desert and there's like this oasis with all these palm trees and 
it's been dry all day and then pff, right into some puddles. I mean, super awesome. The old adage that good roads bring bad people and bad roads bring good people. <laughs> I think this bad road brought some good people together today. Yeah, I mean, flanked by Larry Raglan, and Abe Ruger, Phil Blurton, living legends. We're going to see that, that oasis was amazing. I've never seen that much water in the middle of the desert in an area like that before. So we had to take the opportunity to jump in and, and, uh, and check it out. The Spanish galleons may have been outfitted with cannonballs, but we had our own version as Sarah and a bunch of the crew were ready to cool down. feels so good. I'm Sarah Price and I'm from Mojave Valley, Arizona. I am 30 years old and I've been racing since I was eight. I started off in motocross, climbed through the ranks, turned professional in motocross when I was 16 years old. Women's motocross kind of dwindled. There was no future in it to make a living. So I ended up starting a business, by my first side-by-side -side and started racing four wheels. And now I'm living the dream, getting to do exactly what I love and I'm beyond grateful. The last few years, I've raced in Baja quite a bit. It's where I think I will always forever come back to and live at and race at. So if it's desert or water, I'm in. I think it's rad that Sarah Price is down here shredding with the boys. I think it's a testimony of you know, what women can do in this sport. I think all young women should be looking up to her on what, what can be done. When you put your head down and work hard, because that's what she does, you can get the job done. So hats off to Sarah Price. Being a racer and ambassador for Can-Am is pretty awesome. Um, I'm pretty new to the family, but I absolutely love them. They have been incredible to work with. Their products are insane because, like, let's put it in perspective. I just got off of 3,000 race miles on my one unit. And so Sonora Rally, Nora, Dos Mares, and then now we're here in Trail Emissions on the same prep on one Can-Am. That itself is just impressive because UTV's reliability, that's, you want the most reliable car you can get, so. Kenny, I'm absolutely skilled in the game. Sarah is simply amazing and so fun to hang out with. And speaking of fun, let's smash on the can ams a little bit more and put a smile on our face. <laughs> Trail of Missions is brought to you by Monster Energy, Can Am, Raceline Wheels, Go Everywhere, Baja Designs, The Scientists of Lighting. Skipping through Baja with my buddy Chris. Woo! This is Chris from Can-Am and uh, we got together on this project a couple years ago. We started talking about this and now Trail Emissions is a UTV trip and I gotta tell you that what the UTVs can do, like we race, we ride motorcycles and we do trucks. The UTV is more on the motorcycle side and capability. It's absolutely amazing. It's gotta be crazy to spend the time you're like perpetuating this amazing vehicle. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, seeing the group of, you know, 14 vehicles going up some stuff that, uh, yeah, you, you'd think would take us a, long, a longer time than it does, but we were just clicking along yesterday, and yeah, comfortable. It was, it was a good time. The Can-Am is making it possible for us to go places we would never take the trucks, and also making it possible to take people places because they can't ride the motorcycles there, right? There's a barrier to each. The motorcycle is dangerous, right? You crash, it hurts. 
the truck is expensive and doesn't really fit, but the UTV is like this middle zone where it's comfortable to be in. It can accomplish everything you want to do. And if you treat it and the people with respect, it'll open up the peninsula to amazing things. We are going to Guerrero Negro's day. I think we're going out on the beach a bit today. We're gonna to see the Pacific side for the first time. Yeah. So it should be fun. I'm excited. I hear it's a long day, so let's go do it. Only the most respectful people should come to Baja, and no one should ever make it so those that live in Baja are not stoked to have the off-road community in their town. It's on us, the visitors, to keep the relationship with Baja's people healthy. We travel some very remote routes and try to stay away from populated areas the best we can. When remote, like in Baja's Never Never, as we call it, there is no support, no towns, no people. Our helicopter kept an eye out for traffic all day and we never saw one other car or human on the trail. This is the magic of off-road. Mitchell throws some front tire roost while railing a berm for only the cactus and our camera to see. Baja is a mood, solitude full of stoke. This section was about getting to this relic that is near a palm oasis. It's just a random adobe melting back into the landscape and a hundred foot tall eucalyptus tree that seems out of place. The eucalyptus stands by itself on a peninsula it's not indigenous to. It's an interesting uh, structure how they create the mud and the mortars out of the same mud and grass. It's pretty cool. This is awesome. I love coming down here and I love learning. And this guy here is you know, a historian down here, so to learn all this from him. He's younger than than us, isn't he, isn't he Raj? I think he is. Yeah, a little bit, huh? <laughs> so he's a little younger than us, but he knows a lot more than we do, so. I just can't believe uh, what Cameron has learned about this place over the years. He just, I'm really impressed. I knew his dad and his mom from way, way back, and uh, and I'm just now get really getting to meet him, and it's been really fun, having a great time. Cameron's still a blessing to work with him and promote with him and brainstorm with him and share the ball of stoke with him. I looked up to him as, as, a, as a young kid and now we're racing Can-Ams together. We're doing KOH, we're, we're racing in Baja together. You know, to be down here with Cameron still, I continue to learn from him on the business side, on the racing side, on the hospitality side. Cameron, I think he's such a good ambassador for our sport. What he does, what he comes up with, he is a doer and he makes sure that he does it right. He wants to perceive our whole industry as a whole as something so prestigious and something so respected and he respects everyone around him as well as the environment and that's so important and that's so cool. I think our sport is super grateful to have someone like Cameron in it because he brings something that no one else does to be the ambassador for what we love to do so much. Ah, uh, just more dang lies. When we started bringing our friends to Baja outside of racing, to a private adventures, I committed to riding my moto down every dead end or unknown road to find out where they went. This manic exploration has turned up little gems and mostly unseen vistas that we can still share with our friends 20 years later. The local cows, pumas, donkeys, and horses are the ones that mostly show us the way, even though the horses didn't arrive until the Spaniards brought them in the 1700s. To be honest, sometimes it's crazy how fast these things are. I mean, it's wild that you can go to the dealership, finance one, and go out here and drive it, but 
it's really cool and it allows so many people that haven't been in off-road to just come out here and hop in one and go have a fun time. Before, you know, you had to go to a custom buggy builder and have all this wild stuff built. Now you can actually just buy one, come down and enjoy it. Phil has been more than supportive of the DA's entry into the UTV world. He built our first Hammers race car and has been a wealth of info and fun ever since. We are a huge believer in Phil's talent and attitude on and off the track. On the coast, on the Pacific side, we were on the valley floor and then we come up to this bluff and it is this big sand bluff and it just runs miles down the beach. Um, all in a line, Heli's filming, just absolutely epic. Um, something I'll remember forever. Um, and being, being up in a line and just dicing it out with the ocean and, and everything was just unbelievable. Not good. Who did it? <laughs> I'm buying drinks tonight. Hopping on the beach, going too fast through the rocks. Being stupid. Kelly uh, part delivery service there? Oh yeah, standard desert assassin program. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's Mitchell and I both brought our own support trucks and so whenever there was a car, it's like we all want to get back out to having fun again. So the best thing for us to do is team up get the cars fixed and back on the road. Plus it's, you know, all the stuff that we've seen it so many times, you know, different little things so we can help each other and just get it done faster. Yeah, what was that, 45 minutes? I said, I said it was gonna be an hour, probably an hour. Yeah, yeah not easy. too bad, huh? Consider, considering we don't have an arm on the trail. Yeah, all things learned, I think I need a helicopter when I race now all the time. Yes. <laughs> That's the cool part about the whole entire can -Am team is that we're all pretty open and willing to like help progress everybody to get faster and faster every race. After over a decade of not sharing the route, location, or name of the secret beach, quote unquote, we are going to continue this trend. Sorry. What an amazing location to share with our buddies. It's awesome. I think we, I think we need a helicopter everywhere we go. Racing down in Baja for sure. That's awesome. Epic. A little crazy. Look at this beach. This beach is one off. This is amazing. Welcome back to the Monster Energy Trail Emissions presented by Can Am. Well, if you hold it a little too open on the highway, you could burn a belt up, and the good news is, I have my best guys on it. Oh, How we doing, Phil? Just cross road and built in there and can't really start to get it back together. Yeah. Who was driving? You were. No, I wasn't. Me. Who was driving? Me. Renee was driving. He killed the car. Speaking of Renee, he's been with us since 2007. He's a eight time off-road racing champion, four times with code, I think, is that right? Yeah. And four times from score. Let's, uh, let's check out a little bit more about Renee. What makes him tick? Uh, camera makes me tick. <laughs> I hope you got that. <laughs> I grew up in a place called Guadalupe Valley, the wineries. Yeah. Uh, most of my life lives there. I moved up north in uh, 1981. Then I started driving with some buddies in 2000, 2000 to 2005, and then Cameron reached out to me in 2007, raced with Heidi, won a few championships, and then I started prepping trophy trucks. Been doing it ever since. What is it about Baja keeps trapping you down? Well, this is where I grew up. It's in, in my blood, so very calming to be down here for me. When I come down here is to hang out and, or race, and that's my passion, so I feel at home. I said it before, but when Renee quits racing, quits being around racing, I'm full of Rimcourt too. Renee is the DA's secret weapon, but more than that, 
Rocky's family. Trailer ramps are coming down. Looks like we're back in the game. The number 16 is going to rejoin the fray. And uh, yeah, super stoked to have uh, Mitchell and Phil here to help out. And of course, Eric digging in deep there, but just a whole team effort. You know, I just stood back and watched because they don't want me to touch anything. I might ruin it again. As I always say, the roads in Baja don't lead to nowhere. We respectfully pass through small ajitos or towns on our route and get lots of waving from locals and we usually hand out stickers or posters to the kids. One of our stops was in Bahia Asuncion and our friend Shari Bondi's hotel. Wonderful day today. Lunch was fabulous. Saw some places that I've never seen down here. I saw a lot of the Pacific Ocean on the beach. No people, no anything. Beautiful, unbelievable. Uh, we went to probably four or five spots today that were just spectacular. If you can surprise Larry Raglan with new sights he's never seen, you are doing good work. In our normal, donuts around a desolate Pacific lighthouse seems like everyday fun. That was a fun day. Um, this last section was cool. I mean, that was part of the Baja 1000 course that I didn't get to run the year that we won. Uh, Jeff actually tow drove with uh, the other driver in that section. Terrain today was awesome. Like there was yeah. fast sand washes, uh, like Jet small tight sand washes, rock sections, high speed gravel. We were on the beach. Like we hit like everything today. It was uh, insane. Oh, hey, the San Ignacio Mission. I love that place. So beautiful. The idea was to come for sunset and hang out have fun, but Bog got the best of us, got away from us a little bit, and uh, yeah, we ended up with one on the rope, and just a long day, you know, 232 miles. Not crazy long, but when you want to stop and smell the roses a little bit along the way, it's, uh, it takes a little bit of time. So uh, true to form for the Desert Assassins, leave early, get in at dark. Welcome back to the Monster Energy Trail Emissions presented by Can-Am. Let's play a game. How many banger locations can we string together in one segment? Do you dare us? How about the San Ignacio Mission? The mining ghost town of Pozo Aleman? Historical indigenous people's cave art? The beaches of San Francisco? And Roger Muir's Baja home? We're in if you are. Let's kick it off with Off-Road's version of a Baja Ambassador in San Ig. Getting started on another beautiful Bluebird day, I want to introduce you to the mayor of San Ignacio. This is Edson yes. Romero. His family owns the ice cream store, and he has been hosting us here since he was like, first he was chasing us for stickers, and now he's hosting us in town. Edson, thank you for everything. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. We already appreciate it. You guys come to town, you know, visit, and then they get people to know more about the, the history of Baja and like the missions. And we certainly appreciate it, Edson. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you take Larry and Phil for a tour of the mission and show them around? See, see, for sure. No problem. I'll take them up there. Awesome. No problem. Thank you, brother. Thank you guys. Okay. The San Ignacio mission was awesome. I'd never been into San Ignacio before. It's crazy to see like how they built those things and that obviously that one is still operational too. What I've learned as I've gotten older <laughs> and don't do much of the racing anymore is that while I was racing, I never really enjoyed Baja for what it really is. I was too concerned about just racing and pre-running and I only knew the race course. I never took time I would drive right by places like this without stopping to look at it. And so hopefully the new generation that comes along will, will respect and learn how to appreciate Baja for a lot more than just, just racing. It's good to hear now. I mean, I'm, I'm new to racing down here, but all my time down here is, like you said, it's just so race focused. We just jammed on the road. And so coming down here right now is awesome to actually get to just drive around and look around and see all the cool stuff and stop and check this out, you know. If I was racing and we pre run through here, I mean, I would look out the window as I drove by, but I would definitely wouldn't stop here and come inside and check it all out. So 
Yeah, it's really cool. This mission, uh, it's been here since 1728, so around like 300 years old. From San Ig, we move along to a strikingly interesting spot. It just doesn't look like a mine area you would expect in Baja. Those trails are awesome. Uh, this is a bunch of stuff I haven't ever got to run before, but you're like ripping through those cactus the whole time, just hoping you don't clip one with the cage and kick it in the car. Um, super fun though, I'm used to all like the further up Baja stuff that's just whooped out and beat up, and down here you get to really stretch the legs of these cars and come check out all this cool stuff. We're in one of those relic spots in Baja. I just absolutely love bringing the trail emissions here. Can-Am's perfect vehicle to get here. It's uh, called Pozo Aleman. It loosely translated means German well. And there's some great archaic left behind pieces from mining in the 1800s and was actually active uh, well into the 1900s. This is some stuff I've never seen. This is just gorgeous out here. I can't believe these mines that these people lived out here. Obviously they lived here for a long time because if you look at the homes they built, I just went over and looked at this water where the, and I looked down, there's still water in that well, probably about 50 feet down. So Cameron wanted to know if we go for a swim. I go, I don't think so. <laughs> I think I could probably get down there, but I don't think I'd get back out. Yeah, you definitely don't want to fall on that thing. checked out uh, the cave paintings. That was really cool. It was a pretty good hike up there. Made me realize like I need to for sure keep my shape up so I can keep enjoying Baja because Larry's 80 and he was in front of me and that dude was on the gas up the hill. I started huffing and puffing and he kept going like, I, I can't act like I'm breathing hard following the 80 year old dude up this hill. Uh, but cool, man. I mean, stuff that I just wouldn't ever take the time to stop and look at. You get up there, you're inside these caves, like paintings from I don't even know when, a long, long time ago, like Stone Age paintings but then you're sitting up there and you're looking over the whole valley. Then Roger says, you mean these cave paintings right over here? <laughs> Roger was holding a nugget and played it perfectly. And yes, Larry did outpace Phil on foot. It's a race no matter what we do with this group. And we had some friends bring us up here one time and show us this, the paintings and we just thought, man, this is pretty dang cool. So thought it'd be great to let everybody here take, get a chance to see them. Something to see, I think. Just another epic stop on the Trail of Missions. This is actually the trail of the indigenous people. Uh, some people say this cave art uh, dates back 10,000 years. I, Roger Mears, suggested we come in here and uh, it's the first time I've ever seen it. So I love it when you get the first time for anything in Baja. Memorable. And the fourth banger in a row just happens to be one of the places we featured on the BF Goodrich 50 Best of Baja, the beaches of San Francisco. Look at that, not so bad. The life of Baja Adventures continues. The Monster Energy Trail of Missions has landed at San Francisco. How much epicness can there be on one peninsula? Allegedly it used to be a fly-in Club Med from the mainland. They'd bring people over to fish and the cabanas that were here have been destroyed by hurricanes and there's been some punishment out here, but it's still one of the most picturesque and beautiful places on the peninsula. A little tough to get to, a little out of the way, but absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorite places. I used to have a little, well, a little cabin right here, a little shed. I had my jet ski here, I had a wind, couple wind surfers. My wife and I'd fly down, land right here and spend the weekend. It doesn't get better than this. Drive in your canyon to a secluded beach Look at Paul over there. He's living his best life. 
by like 100 million percent. It's funny because we're over on the Pacific side, it was nice and cool. We started getting over here on the other side and it started getting hot and by the time we got there, the perfect thing to do was to go out there and get in the water. It's like, again, you know, when you come down here to do the race, you typically don't have time to, you know, smell the roses and that was, uh, that was a good moment. Combining history, off-roading, and location fits perfect on trail emissions, and so does Roger and Carol Mears' Baja Oasis. This is me giving my dad a trophy. When I, when I was four years old, he won the main event in Wichita. I'm giving him a trophy. So I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> and in fact, not only that, is I have the trophy, the same trophy that I handed him right there. No, uh, here it is, yeah. It's cool to hear their old Baja stories, you know, when they were racing down here with no speed zones, no GPS. I think what I've enjoyed the most is the racer in the legend. They're always kind of going back and forth. Like, like last night, Roger was like, oh, Larry, you won five overall Baja 1000? I think it was four. Watching my dad and Larry talk, you know, and just listening to their stories and the stuff they went through and uh, their battles that they had. You know, it's just really cool to see those guys kind of, you know, reconnect. You know, I just really enjoyed that part of it. How important do you think it is to pass on the knowledge and love for Baja? To me, it's real important because I just fell in love with Baja, you know, way back in the 70s. When I first started coming down here. I've just always, uh, you know, this is where I want to be. When I, I can't think of any place I'd rather be. So uh, we uh, built a place and have a place there. And, and with, by doing that, we've been able to pass that on to our kids. The, learn about this whole place. It's really impressive. There's no place like Baja. Running around chasing my dad, you know, out in the desert and, and uh, you know, just played in the desert a lot. You know, whether we were riding, it wasn't really racing, but it, yeah, I think it gets you really familiar with what the desert's like. Yeah, it's funny, you know, at night and in the morning, Larry and I have been talking a bunch because we've been kind of leaning away most of the time. It's the same. I mean, it's, even though he's 80 years old, he's still just as competitive. You know, he comes up flying on me. We're battling out there having fun. Me and Larry were battling it out one day. We get done and we're like, oh, no way, I missed that turn or that. Or, you know, and it's just so cool that there's, you know, this huge gap in our time eras in the sport but yet we can reconnect here in Trail Emissions and just have a blast. This Trail Emissions broadcast has been brought to you by Monster Energy, Can-Am, BF Goodrich Tires, Baja HQ, building your rig and sharing the stove. Another banger sunrise on the Sea Cortez is how we like to start our final day of roosting in our Can-Ams. We have had lots of laughs and visited some great locations. So far, my favorites have been the arch at the secret beach and the mine ruins at Pozo Alamon. Loosely following the El Camino Real in many spots, we have seen the easy to get to San Ignacio mission and the toughest mission ruins to visit at Santa Maria. We saved one of my favorites for our final day. Welcome to San Borja mission. This is one of my favorite locations on the peninsula for a number of reasons. Uh, I love San Borja because it, it does have a very remote feel, but there's a family. Uh, it's been here for nine generations that caretakes it. Stone Church, 
obviously came later, but you can see the adobe ruins behind. There's not a lot of places, or I can't even think of a place on the peninsula where you can have the original adobe ruins and then the stone church also. So it's a really cool location. The other reason I like it is because it's the 16th mission location and my race number is number 16. So that's a good reason for me. Yeah, my family is live here. Mm -hmm. It's descendant Cochimi Indian. I make it a restoration, the mission. I need a restoration, the Palapa. I have K paintings over here. Uh, this is the mission that's closest to uh, my dad's place here in Baja. So we would come up here for day trips when I come up here for the summer. It's a special place. We always enjoyed coming. I know as, as a kid, I've come up here quite a bit. So yeah, it's cool to kind of relive that a little bit. This is insane to think how they built this 400 years ago with the tools and technology they had. It's a beautiful, beautiful building in the middle of the desert with nothing around it. Pretty crazy. Yeah, and it's cool to hear how he's doing all the restoration on it, making everything like an exact replica of how it was, and he's preserving some of the stuff off to the side. And he said it was like 1,500 people that built this thing in 1776, so pretty wild to think that many people were up here. So Angel, the caretaker of the mission here, uh, just gave us a full tour. Uh, we saw everything from where he baptized his family uh, to, how, to how he upkeeps the mission. It's a really impressive process, um, how they build these missions. They, they get rocks from the mountains, track them down, and square them off and build these a massive, beautiful uh, structures. See that process, see him, how dedicated he is to being here, keeping the spirit of the mission, keeping it alive is just absolutely amazing. How are you guys doing? Doing Good. awesome. This is uh, it's been I've been, great. I've been from Ensenada to Cabo on dirt bikes with Malcolm Smith for we've done it probably 15 times at least. And yeah. I thought I'd pretty much seen everything, but during this trip that uh, Cameron's put together for all of us, the history that I've learned down here has just been incredible. And to see this young man here, 35 years old, climbing these rocks and restoring this mission is uh, it's a blessing to see somebody that dedicated. So it's been a very, uh, very awesome trip. Yeah, these Can-Ams, it's crazy the evolution of the side-by-side -side industry and how fast these cars are. You know, it was always the joke that we were in the golf carts racing and the slow class, and now, I mean, we're getting top 20s and really giving the big cars a run for their money. And to be able to just come down here and buy this thing from the dealership, put fuel in it, and go rip all through Baja, we'll have a great time down here, it's crazy. I mean, we ran so hard throughout this whole time. I mean, it was, my dad was really surprised. You know, he couldn't believe how hard he could run, you know, those Can-Ams and what they could take. Zero problems. I mean, I, I feel guilty because <laughs> it's not my car. <laughs> so I'll try to take care of it, but everybody down here wants to, wants to just go, go, go. And I go, oh my gosh, here we go again. They've, uh, they've been taking the abuse that some of these guys are putting on them, and uh, yeah, not to say, there, there hasn't been much gentle driving. It's been uh, test, product testing, if you will. <laughs> We've been getting these vehicles day after day, and they, they're holding up, they're lasting, and it's just a testimony to how good the k and platform really is. We're parking here at a Santa Zanus or <laughs> Saint Zanus, and uh, Rodrigo decided to put it up on some rocks, and we're just kind of tipped over a little bit, and he couldn't get into gear. We just ended up putting it on its side. It's his fault. It's his fault. He's a co-driver. <laughs> Always a co-driver. What la what side did it land on? Pink side. Of course. It's got me working all day. I wanted to make sure I made the show. The show. Well, Rodrigo, you certainly made the show, but I mean you and the others made this trip and show special for me. Baja is amazing, but it's the people of Baja that make it majestic, like the Ampudia family. As we get close to the trailers, I always feel a little melancholy, but it's time to start planning for separate trucking UTV trail emission trips for 2024, and to start telling stories, and lies, and maybe some half-truths. <laughs> ah, Baja, you gotta love it.
Just got done with my first trail of missions and I honestly have always dreamed of coming on one of these. Um, I've watched them for a very long time and so pretty, pretty honored to be around such cool people that are in our sport that are badasses from legends to back in the day to today's, you know, heroes. Came down with some uh, old friends of mine and made a lot of new friends. I'm so appreciative that Cameron invited me to come along. The camaraderie and the people here are just fabulous. It's been a wonderful trip. Awesome times. Uh, really cool. Uh, get to share it with my dad and all these guys out here and see a bunch of stuff we've never seen out here. Final night and final dinner with everybody and hopefully we get a chance to do this again. I've been playing in the desert since I was six years old and this is a hundred percent the most memorable, just incredible experience that I've ever had. A thousand miles of abuse on these cars and we're all back home in one piece and laughing. Man, what an experience. BFT tires rock and rolled the whole time. This will be something that I remember for the rest of my life, no doubt about it. Thank you, Cameron, for having us out here. Trail Emissions, DA crew, everyone that came out to support. Super cool ride, places, stories, everything. Thanks, guys. It's uh, beautiful missions, and you know, along the way, we got to see and meet beautiful people in Baja. We got to talk to people, we got to share with them, we got to laugh. And most importantly, we just got to get out and be free because that's for us what it's all about. Adventuring, getting out and not being stuck at home or stuck behind the desk all the time. We work to live, not live to work. For now, that's it from Gonzaga Bay. My name's Cameron Steele. This has been the Monster Energy Trail Emissions. That's a wrap.